In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Today we gather uh, on this Tuesday and 18th week in ordinary time uh, on the Feast of St. John Vianney, uh, who was an renowned for his amazing ability to meet people um, in, in the confessional and really be a, an incredibly healing presence for them and is a patron saint of diocesan priests. So we pray especially for all the priests who serve um, serve our people um, in, in diocesan parishes. We also pray, um, continue to pray that God will guide us and direct us in these challenging times that we're in in the midst of the pandemic and other social challenges. So let's pray for that grace and pray that we can truly um, be open to the way God wants to transform each one of us in this time. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, grant that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Write all the words I have spoken to you in a book. For thus says the Lord, Incurable is your wound, grievous your bruise. There is none to plead your cause. No remedy for your running sore, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you, they do not seek you. I struck you as an enemy would strike, punished you cruelly. Why cry out over your wound? Your pain is without relief. Because of your great guilt, your numerous sins, I have done this to you. Thus says the Lord, See, I will restore the tents of Jacob, his dwellings I will pity. City shall be rebuilt upon hill, and palace restored as it was. From them will resound songs of praise, the laughter of happy men. I will make them not few but many. They will not be tiny, for I will glorify them. His son shall be as of old. His assembly before me shall stand firm. I will punish all his oppressors. His leader shall be one of his own, and his rulers shall come from his kin. When I summon him, he shall approach me. How else should one take the deadly risk of approaching me, says the Lord? You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion, and appeared in all his glory. When he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer, the Lord will rebuild Zion again and appear in all his glory. Let this be written for the generation to come and let his future creatures praise the Lord. 
The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The children of your servants shall abide, and their posterity shall continue in your presence, that the name of the Lord may be declared on Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples gather together, and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side of the sea while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesaret, and when the people of that place recognized him, they sent word to all the surrounding country. They brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, one of the songs that has been like a mainstay at Regis since I've come here has been the song Oceans, you know, and it's about this gospel, you know, um, which I I love the song. And I've been singing it all day, but I don't want to preach about that. Um, What I was struck by um, is almost a schizophrenic God in the first reading. Um, A God who uh, really... Reads the people a riot act. I mean, gives them you know gives them a riot act for all that they've been doing and how he has. It says, you know, incurable is your wound. Uh, I struck you as an enemy would strike, punish you cruelly. Um, and and the reading is broken up. It's it's Jeremiah, the first two verses, which basically are the introduction. You know, telling Jeremiah to prophesy, but then it goes to verses 12 to 15, and it goes to the verses 18 to 22. 12 to 15 are God saying, I've struck you with this incurable wound. 18 to 22 are God restoring, uh, building up Zion again, restoring them. And I thought, what's in verses 16 and 17? So I went and looked, and 16 is more about, you know, what they're... Well, 16 is really about how God's going to attack their enemies and restore them. But it's like this sudden thing. It's like God saying, you have an incurable wound and I've inflicted it on you. And then suddenly it's like, I'm going to defend you and you're going to be restored. You know? And, and so anyway, it, that, that kind of, um, that, that sense of what, what's God's role in all this? Um, and, it reminded me of a conversation I had recently with someone where he asked me, 
do you feel like God has sent this pandemic upon us? And he goes, because, you know, I think we're on the wrong track in lots of ways. And, um, and you can see what's happening. People, families who never were spending any time with each other are spending all this time with each other. Some good things are coming to this. You know, it's like this surgery, in a sense, that God is doing on us. And I certainly didn't agree with him. I, I mean, I didn't, I said, I don't believe God has sent this upon us. Just like I don't believe the, I mean, I believe that there are consequences for choices we've made. And I could go into that as far as a, a theory about the pandemic. But, um, but more importantly, I think God does, no matter what happens to us, God's hand, God's grace is there inviting us to be transformed. I mean, that's definitely there. And it reminded me of something in the 12 step, I mean, in, in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a passage that gets quoted all the time. Um, and it starts actually with this reflection. The person says, okay, God, it is true that I really am an alcoholic of sorts, and that's all right with me. Now what am I going to do about it? So it's this this, he says, acceptance proved to be the key, that I accepted that I was an alcoholic. And, um, and then he says, when I stopped living in the problem and began living in the solution, the problem went away. Um, and so I think part of this moment is like, how do we live in the solution? What is the solution to things that have, you know, all the division, all the things that, you know, possibly the, the lack of, of sharing equally in God's, you know, the gifts of all God's creation might have had a hand in bringing this virus into the world. Um, but then they go on to say this, and this is the part that gets quoted all the time. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me. I can find no serenity in serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. And I don't, I don't want to suggest that all of you immediately embrace that, that line, nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Um, I, that's, that, I have trouble accepting that part myself because I think our own sinfulness is, is a contributor to things that happen in the world. But I think there is a real truth there that says, if I concentrate on what um, needs to be changed in me and my attitudes, I will be, as the expression, the change that the world, that I, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. That kind of, that sense of how do I invite God to help me be transformed so that I can be the change that I, I desire for the world. So let's stand and pray. Let's pray that we truly can um, Respond to this moment with an incredible openness to God's grace and generosity, um, with generosity, so that we can truly be a positive, transformative presence in our world today. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray for all the things that we need to accept. They just announced today about um, what the plan is for sports in our high schools, uh, Chassa has announced plans and their painful plans for some people. So I pray for, and, and, and all the things we need to accept to try and really um, avoid transmission of the, of, the, of the virus, that we can really embrace and accept those things so that we can um, move forward as a community in, in, in positive ways. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray for the Kairos 133, the final Kairos of this past school year, for these rising seniors who are going to make Kairos and for the, the graduates who are leading them and the, and the other faculty and administrators who are leading them in this retreat, that it'll be safe and blessed 
um, a blessed time of growing closer to God and, and growing in God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let's pray for our high school leaders, um, the leadership of our administrators, um, as they make decisions about how to begin the school year, that God's wisdom will be upon them. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And I pray the same for all educators. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Pray for our nation's leaders, for our state's leaders, that we can make the, the choices we need to make um, or the, that, that their decisions will really be for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And I just pause now and invite any other prayers that my community would like to offer um, and, and invite you at home to call to mind the intentions you hold in your hearts. Let's offer a prayer for Father Tom Green as he begins his service to all of us as provincial. That God will give him strength and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray today in the Feast of St. John Vianney for all priests, um, um, cross religious orders and dioceses that they might be strengthened in their vocation of God's grace and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for all the intentions in our book of intentions and all the intentions that each of us lifts up to God from the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Loving God, hear these prayers and open us more and more to the ways you want to transform us. We pray all this through Christ our Savior. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. In your goodness, we have received this bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become our bread of life. Blessed, blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for in your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Saint John Vianney, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new. And offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for all life. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Vianney, St. Ignatius Loyola, St. John Francis Regis, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your disciples, I leave you my peace. My peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And as always, during this communion time, we invite you at home to just be aware of Christ close to you, Christ's spirit with you, Christ wanting to nourish you in the midst of any challenges you face. And let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, prepare us for the eternal joys that, as a faithful steward, Blessed John Vianney, St. John Vianney, came to realize through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our good and loving God continually bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.